Hello, it's time for our surprise guest interview. Our surprise guest is Peter Lin. Peter and I met at Beyond the Sock Puppetry Workshop for television and film. And he's been a bit of a puppetry mentor to me ever since. Peter performs Walter and Gloria Estefan, the Penguin, for The Muppets. And on Sesame Street, he plays Harry Monster and many others. Peter was very gracious with his time, and I was able to sit and talk with him about how he got started. Peter, are you ready? Hi, I'm ready. I think so. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Just, uh, uh, okay. Ready. Shoot. All right. Uh, the first question is, why puppetry? Why what puppetry? <laughs> why did you pick it? Why? I didn't why pick it. It, it. it picked me. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not really capable of doing anything else. I have no marketable skills. Uh, this summer, okay. my wife and I got married. We were visiting some friends in Sonoma, California. And like, oh, it's so beautiful up here. But Marlena was like, well, what would you do? Because you have no skills. And it's true. I have no marketable skills. Um, my puppetry. It's, it's all I ever wanted to do. I mean, I guess this is fairly well known. I, I uh, thought I had to get a real job at one point, so I went to college and got a degree in psychology. But uh, before I graduated, I remembered that, no, I just want to play with dolls on film and TV. And then everything after that is I've just gotten really, really lucky. But, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I just, I love it. I love it. What was the first time you were like this? this is what I want to do. Like, <laughs> uh, my early, my really, my earliest memory was being in preschool. I must've been about five years old. And there was a little squirrel puppet that the preschool had. And I used to entertain the other kids with it and make them laugh. And I loved that feeling. I remember as a little kid, just kind of made me so happy being able to do that. Um, but that wasn't your question. The question was, when was the first time I knew that I wanted to do it as a, as a career? Sometime between age eight and 10, somewhere in that neighborhood, I had an epiphany that, uh, you know, from watching a lot of television as a child, seeing a lot of grownups being very unhappy about going to work, Flintstone! And uh, thinking, well, when I'm a grownup, I, I want to have a job that I, that I like going to and that I can make a living at. And thank you, Jim Henson. Uh, that's, that's possible. Yeah. I can relate to that too because when I was a teenager, I was like, I'm never going to get a desk job. Like, I never ever want a desk job ever. I don't want to sit at a desk. And that's <laughs> exactly what I ended up doing for a long time. <laughs> that's funny you should say that because when I was a teenager, I was like, I'm never going to own a Ford because my parents had Fords and they were always breaking. I'm never going to own a Ford. And they were building condominiums, you know, in Atlanta. They're always building stuff. So like, I'm never going to live in a condominium and I'm never going to live in New York. So I moved to New York, and my <laughs> wife and I bought a Ford and uh, a condominium. We don't have any of those things anymore. I, I, well, I still live in New York, but I no longer have the condo or the Ford. <laughs> but they all happened. Uh, if things, if, oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if everyone became or didn't do what they said when they were teenagers? Yeah. It's like, I'm just saying high school wishes and thoughts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. You know, turn to yeah. adulthood. Uh, I always said I wouldn't. I would never have a desk job, and then I became an illustrator and sat at a desk all day. <laughs> and then I was like, why, why am I doing this? <laughs> Dumb. When you were in college, like, what made you realize that oh, you... Oh, what a good question that is. Yeah. I've never been asked that before. You know what? I think I, think I was meeting with my advisor uh, in, in the psychology department and talking about what classes I needed to be taken, taking and made, and it might've been, I mean, I was, I remember taking a, a statistics class um, and thinking, why am I doing this? And, uh, well, you know, I can't pinpoint an exact moment, but I do recall speaking to my advisor about it and saying, you know what? I, take, after taking all these different, you know, psych 101 classes, I, I really don't want to do this. Um, I really, and then I told him about, you know, what I'd always wanted to do and what had been a hobby for me for many years. And uh, he said, well, you know, there's not really a puppetry major and it's too late to transfer to the theater program, but uh, maybe you could take some early childhood education classes or something. Um, happily, 
higher higher education has changed and now like i know with my daughters that are in college there are all types of opportunities for them to take whatever classes they want despite their major but back then not so much mm -hmm. Uh, so I don't have a specific moment. I just know that it was around halfway through my junior year. And I remember my uh, advisor being supportive of it. Cool. And my parents too, very supportive. And, <laughs> and it just, uh, I mean, it worked out that, you know, I was going to school in Georgia and my, my, I grew up in Atlanta. My parents lived there. And uh, serendipitously, that's the home of the Center for Puppetry Arts. So that's, mm -hmm. that's where I started right out of college as an intern. What were you interning for? No, it was just it was just at the Center for Puppetry Arts as a puppet. Oh, okay, intern. so it's a, a basic one, like because um, I know now they have like a performance intern and they have a oh puppet building intern. Oh, but cool. I guess that no, this was just this was just a general. It, it was rich. Okay. There was there were a lot of people that went through in that time period that went on to um, some pretty cool things. I mean, ba it was myself, Basil Twist, um, Alice Deneen. Uh, Robin Walsh went through that program. Mary Robinette Kowal is a puppeteer and, and published author. And I'm sure I'm missing some people. I think Ron Binion, I think, went through that program. Uh, anyway, yeah, there was a whole mess of us at that time okay. that went on to do some cool stuff. Awesome. Did you work on any personal projects while you were at the center? Not... Oof. No, I worked with other people on their shows. There was an experiment, XPT was Experimental Puppet Theater. Mm. And I, I like adult puppet stuff. And I helped a number of people uh, with that. Um, no, you know, the only show, I think the only show that I've ever really created on my own was the one that I did since I was a little kid. Uh, and I've added on to it over the years, but just with hand Muppet style, hand puppets, and my mother, uh, when I was a kid, built me this this great little puppet stage with a black fabric behind so I could see the audience, but they couldn't see me. And um, it's and, and I used to do like, you know, birthday parties and street performing and that sort of thing. And uh, and then when I moved to New York, actually, well, heck, it was sometime in college, I just stopped doing it. And I still had my large puppet collection. I just stopped doing it. And it wasn't until my kids uh, were around three or four years old that I kind of resurrected um <laughs> my old show, but that's always only been for, and it's still the one, and I, I still do it occasionally. Friends will ask uh, in, in town if I do a show for their kid's party. Mm -hmm. Rarely happens anymore, but it's still basically the same show. It's, it's kind of a ripoff of the Muppet show with variety acts, and it's very traditional hand puppet show with a host and goofy acts and terrible things happening. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I've never had any desire to, do it in a, a, in a more public format than that, or, or really uh, create my own series. I think that people that are able to create shows are just amazing and, and good writers are worth their weight in gold. Um, my, my, I'm more comfortable with taking someone else's idea and running with it, like uh, specifically with a character. Mm -hmm. you, know, you give me a character with a couple of bullet points and I'll have a blast fleshing it out and, and, you know, helping to realize the character um, three dimensionally, but creating content not not my forte. <laughs> um, what did you do after the internship? Where, where did you go? What did you do? Right. So at the internship was only a three month program, and uh, the only thing really available at that time there was an opening for an assistant to the museum director, and so I became a docent and gave tours for six months. Uh, I was the museum gu tour guide, and then uh, eventually there was um, there were auditions for the tour. For the, every year at that time, the center did a big stage show that they would take on the road, and um, I think the tour was I think it was something like eight or nine months, and uh, it was a production of Pinocchio, and I auditioned for that and got got the lead role, and we did toured all over the eastern half of the country for like nine months. Cool. And it was an incredible experience. So, yeah, so internship for three months, then museum docent for six months. And that led into uh, the tour. And the tour came back. And uh, I might be getting ahead of your questions here, but the tour came back. And there were auditions for the uh, resident puppeteers. 
And to me at the time, the resident puppeteers were like, oh, because they, they, those guys are on the main stage at the Center for Puppetry Arts and they do, they do at the time, three shows uh, a year. And um, I auditioned and, and got the and got Wilbur in Charlotte's Web. I was so thrilled. Uh, but that was around the same time that I had been on the side auditioning for Muppets and uh, and attending workshops. And I, I got invited to New York, kind of half right in the middle of the Charlotte's Web rehearsals. And uh, and then the rest is history. <laughs> We tried it. We tried reading a couple of scenes, just me reading as me, which was really hard. <laughs> but I, and even in those years, I wasn't a regular. I was teaching for Sesame. You know, I would they would send oh. me off uh, to teach foreign to teach the the puppeteers of foreign co-productions of Sesame. So I was awesome. in China and a bunch of times in Germany and Mexico, uh, once in Hong Kong. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Check the description below for more information and videos and cool stuff. <laughs>